Hi, today we're going to talk about some boundaries and some protection as we get closer to the holiday season. I know a lot of people have to deal with other people they don't particularly gel with. So I thought we'd just do a little ASMR and really this is instructional. We will do a couple of little quick meditation techniques, but this is not a healing per se. This is about you creating your boundaries so that you can cope with the day a little bit better. All right. Okay, so you've probably watched a lot of the videos and seen some of the ways that I will do it. I've also got some objects here. So I'm just going to light a candle and this is perhaps my most favourite. I want you to imagine that you have a candle in the centre of your being. In between your solar plexus and your heart isn't that just a gorgeous colour? And I want you now, in your mind and in your body, to feel and grow that candle, okay? So it glows and it grows and you push it out to the right, to the left side, to the front and the back. And to above and below, keep pushing it outwards and upwards and downwards. To the left and to the right and glow and grow that candle. Until it creates a ball of fire around you. Impenetrable. That's a good word, isn't it? And then make it this beautiful, gorgeous, glowing colour. You can turn it another colour if you want. Just, just humour me now. Turn the flame blue. And it probably feels different, doesn't it? Turn the flame white for really high cleansing. And indeed the Ascension flame is held in the temple of Luxor or above it by the angelic beings. And then you could also turn it into the violet flame. An amethyst colour. And that is even more protective and transmutes negative energy into positive energy. Okay. So, one method, a ball of flame, and by doing that, you are pushing out all of those emotions and those pretenses and those stigmas that are not yours because you are a pure divine being. You are a little part of God, Brahman, Yahweh, whatever you want to call it, having an experience. What do I mean by that? Let's say that that is the omnipresent, okay? That's me having a little experience as the omnipresent. That's you having a little experience of, as the omnipresent. That is another person. That is another. So they're all soul fragments having these experiences from the same one energy. So we are all indeed, I believe, sons of God. Okay. So... We've done a fire version. Now, another good thing to do is to hold your hands in front of your solar plexus when you have to deal with these people or do these things. 
Nobody knows what you're doing, but you are creating a shield with your hands, just at your solar plexus. I believe that the solar plexus is the main feeling energy center, as well as the other chakras that we talk about. Okay, so this one will be the one that feels the most and probably gets the most shadows or stagnant energy in. I'm just going to grab a sip of my coffee. Oops, that was on a crystal. Sorry about that. Okay, another really lovely method of protection is to imagine angel wings folding around you. Beautiful angel wings. Just visualize them now softly wrapping around you like a swan envelops her signets on the back. And that's a nice, gentle way. And that can be done really quickly, just in your mind's eye, in between the car and the house. Okay. Other methods of protection and boundaries are to imagine that you are in a black obsidian pyramid or a shungite pyramid. Okay. So you can imagine that you are walking up to a little doorway and you enter it and you walk to the middle. I believe that is the strongest part of the pyramid. Okay. And this pyramid will be lined with gold hieroglyphs of protection and you could even place it inside a star of David or a Merkaba. Okay, this will be your light body and it is made up of two pyramids. The lower one and the upper one and they spin at different um, speeds. So imagining that Star of David around you and I would visualize all that in gold and black obsidian. Okay. Another method would be to imagine that you are standing as a pentagram or you are in a pentagram and you could draw the protection from your foot up to your shoulder, across to your other shoulder, down to your other foot and up to the point. I think I did that wrong. Let me start at the head. <laughs> From head to foot, to shoulder, to other shoulder, there we are, to foot and back up to head. And you would be balanced and you would be in this five-pointed star with all the elements at each point. Okay. And that, I think, I have, has come from the Golden Dawn. Somebody sent me a book on the Golden Dawn and I had a little look through it and that was in there. Okay, you can also um, use crystals. Here, Herkima diamonds. You could even imagine that you are walking into the crystal. These help with the electronic smog that's around us, the EMF waves or whatever they're called. And these are not particularly high grade. They were, you know, they weren't cheap, but I think the white and the the, what, the clear and the greyish ones are a higher grade and they're normally smaller. If I move them down you, you can probably feel the vibration of them. So Herkimer diamonds 
are good for protecting against all of these electronic stuff we have and this if, especially if you're an empath okay also we have the black tourmaline and this is a great thing to grid your bedroom in putting it in the corners for protection but you can just carry a little protective stone a piece of it on you and if you have other black stones or if, even if you've picked up a normal small stone and you think that's going to be my protection stone hold it and cleanse it wash it under the tap whatever hold it in front of your heart and your solar plexus and imprint your energy on it and what you want it to do. I want this to protect me. Your job is to protect me, to make me feel safe. That sort of thing. Okay, amethyst. Now, amethyst is quartz with another mineral deposit in it. Now, the Greeks used to carry amethyst to stop the effects of alcohol being too strong and I actually thought it was a bit of a joke but somebody after I put on the internet the amethyst wand clearing actually put that they had had a beer they were feeling really sick at the beginning of it by the end it had cleared and they felt okay so who knows, it might well work against being intoxicated, but I would stress to you to pace yourself. Have one drink, have a soft drink, have a, you know, an alcoholic beverage, then a soft drink. Go easy so that you don't ruin the Christmas day for everyone else and yourself, okay? All right now, let's look at some other techniques. So I've pulled a couple of shells out. Okay, a sea urchin. And we can use this as a visual analogy. Remember, this sea urchin had lots of spines sticking out of it, probably to about here. So that created a boundary, okay? And I have trodden on a sea urchin when I was a child and it is not a fun experience. It lasts weeks. So that is its defence. So you could imagine a sea urchin around you. You could imagine you're standing through the hole in the middle and you have this beautiful sacred geometry around you with lots of spines sticking out, okay. Then I also remembered back to when I was a little kid in Bermuda, snorkeling around the dockside. Suddenly, this very scared octopus shoots out, <gasps> eyes in panic, and he squirts in. And then he made his getaway. And this is an octopus egg, an argonaut shell. So you could imagine that you are emitting some kind of ink to hide, especially if you have to go somewhere and you want to blend in. I actually used to put on a Harry Potter invisibility cloak you know, it worked. There was a few of us at a party and this woman came in who went on and on and on and we did not want to talk to her. And I was with two spiritual friends and my friend Chris said, invisibility cloaks. So we did it. We made ourselves invisible and she actually talked to a lot of other people and walked straight past us. So that works too. But you have to feel these things with your solar plexus as well as working it with your mind, okay? They don't always work, but they're little tricks. Now, we also 
have some trees that are protective from the Irish Owen. And the first one I am going to talk about is the Rowan or the Mountain Ash. Now I'm not sure if the Mountain Ash is exactly the same as the Rowan, the Luish. But this Rowan, Luish, is a tree that they would make cough syrup out of, okay? Poisonous to the very young and the very old. So in the cases of the elderly and the young, they would actually harvest the berries and then thread them on cotton and make a necklace. And they would dry on the necklace and offer protection in that way. So you could imagine ingesting some of these, this jelly, they would make it into a jelly or a syrup. And it protecting you from cold. Not quite the same thing as boundaries, although they would make something called a Bridget's Cross out of them. That is for Imolk, which we will talk about in about six weeks. And they would place that Bridget's Cross, Bride's Cross, above their doorway. Okay. The next couple of trees. The first one is called Streif. It is the Blackthorn and it is a very difficult tree to work with in spirituality and in real life because in real life the thorns are about that long. Okay. This is what you get slow berries to make slow gin with, okay, big purple berries in the fall. Okay, but they, th they form barriers and hedgerows of really spiky woods. Young birds or small birds will take cover in them and they are the first tree, the first of the thorns, the hawthorn, the buckthorn, the white thorn, to flower in the hedgerows. So imagining you be surrounded by a hedgerow of blackthorn, of strife. Let's draw that down. Strife. Okay. Beautiful red and cream wood. And I have a bull roarer actually made out of this. Bull roarers are something you would turn and it goes <coughs> You could create <coughs> sacred space in that way. And then we have the holly. Taina. Taina. And of course, we all know what holly leaves are like and how dark they are. And you could imagine sitting in a circle of those as well. And of course, at this time of the year, the Holly King is coming to an end for pagans. Okay. At the solstices, the Oak King and the Holly King fight. And in less than a week, they will fight again, light and darkness. And the light will win, the Oak King will win and he will govern the next six months until the summer solstice when he reaches his peak and then the Holy King has a fight again and the Holy King wins from summer solstice to winter solstice. So of course, if you are watching this in the Southern Hemisphere, you just transpose them, you're entering you're about to enter the time of the Holly King. Okay. And then we have just one more that I use. And this is the Muon. So this is blackberries, brambles, really thorny briars. You could use a rose as well, you know, a rambling rose, anything with thorns. This would bring in abundance as well, um, good antioxidants 
they make a, a very good wine out of it. But I know from experience as my job as a gardener, you, the tip of a thorn embeds itself and you can't get it out, it will go septic and it hurts like hell. So the muon, you can also imagine the muon weaving its way around you to form the protection. So in fact, you could have a proper hedgerow around you. You could have the rowan trees, which could be coppiced. So coppicing is cutting them down at the, at the base each time so that multi-stems grow and then they could be trained and tied in with the blackthorn, with the muon and what was the other one and with the holly. So you could have a great big wall of plants around you and that is indeed what they would do to the farm animals. They'd call it a kraal probably in Africa, you know, and they would they would put them into this place with all of the thorns and everything so that the animals couldn't get in. Maybe a shepherd would lie there and make a fire to also scare those animals off. Fire is a great protector. Now, what else have I got on here that I can look at for protection? Okay. I think I'm sure there are lots of other things, but I can't think of any at the moment. Ah, I've got one more. Okay. You could imagine building a wall around you. Okay. A protective wall. You could also imagine a breastplate being placed on. I'm just trying to think what comes up for my clients when I'm reading. Imagine the Greeks and their breastplates. You could imagine it being sort of fastened at the sides and you have a breastplate there and a breastplate there. Okay. I don't like making mirrors to reflect negative energy back. Just block it with brass or gold, front and back, and you have a strong breastplate. You'll probably even find yourself holding yourself a little bit better. We would also, um, in regards to the angels that I spoke of, you would think of Archangel Michael, Archangel Michael. And of course, the violet flame. Now, this transmutes negative energy into positive energy. And what has been coming up for quite a few people at the moment is a little cartoon cloud above their head, raining purple rain, just think of that print song, raining purple rain down on them and transmuting that negative energy into positive energy, so the violet flame. You could also imagine a hat, you put on a, a hat, perhaps a leprechaun hat or something with a big head that Violet flame just pours down onto your head. So lots of little mind techniques, okay? And if you're thinking back to a time that you wished you had more protection, I'm just going to draw the distance healing symbol into that. And I'm also going to draw a choker ray around you. And if you know what this symbol is, you can use that. So I'd be wrapping those bars around you. Okay. So there's quite a few little helps and hints on how to protect yourself. Another one that I'm just thinking of is animals. They're showing me a stag or even dogs prowling around you or lions prowling around you in a circle. So using your animal helpers, your animal medicine as well. So I hope this helps, gives you a few little 
mind techniques that nobody else need know about. And of course, when you get home, put that violet flame cloud above you, but you can brush that energy off. Dry brushing is a technique used by Chinese, Japanese, and probably many other cultures, literally brushing yourself down, brushing that energy off and away from you. Okay, I'm going to leave you now. Speak to you very soon. Ta-da!